Is product photography dead? No, not at all, at least not until we have a lot more control over much more consistent results when using AI image generation, and we are still a long way from that. Anyway, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to get from this to this in under five minutes. You don't need any fancy equipment, no high-end camera, no expensive lenses, no props, no studio lights. You don't even need a studio. All you need is your smartphone, a Kriya AI basic subscription for $10 per month, and maybe a little bit of Photoshop. The process I'm going to show you is not flawless and the results are far from perfect, but I still believe that if you already have some experience in this area, then you should be able to easily 10x the quality and amount of your work by following these steps. And now let's get started. Step one, shoot a few high res pictures of the object you want to set the scene for. Make sure to do this in front of a neutral or white background while trying to keep all parts of the object in focus. Take at least 10 pictures from different angles. It's not necessary to isolate the object by removing the ground or background in Photoshop. Just keep the floor shadows. It usually leads to better results. Step two, go to the train page and upload your images. Select object and real time in the settings and start the training job. This should only take a few minutes. As soon as the job is complete, Kriya shows you these little preview images. When you train the model, you should remember that you are training for a specific style. The model does not understand the subject as a 3D object. So don't expect the object to be consistent when applying this style later. A specific style includes colors, materials, surface textures, and even forms and shapes and can be used to create similar objects or entirely different objects with the same look as a training material. Object consistency is not possible yet with how the models are currently trained. Step three, when training is complete, call up the real-time image generator, select an aspect ratio, change the computation model to flux and enter a prompt that describes the scene in detail, like object color, background colors, props, camera position, and so on. Decrease the AI strength slider from 100 to 99% so that adjustments on the canvas have some influence on the result. When the AI strength is set to 100, nothing you do on the canvas affects the real-time window anymore. Step 4. Apply the style you have created before and crank it up to 100%. Create different variations, alter the prompt or change the background color to change the overall mood of the scene. When you like an image, save it. Step number five. To fine tune the composition, drag and drop the AI generated image to the canvas, decrease the AI strength and use the generate image tool to create additional props directly on the canvas. Right click on it, Remove the background, move it around and observe how it blends into the image on the right. In this example, I use simple rectangles to add more ice cubes. There is no exact method here, just move the objects and play around with the slider of the AI strength. When you're happy with the result, save the image. Step six, go to the asset page, click on your favorite image and send it to the upscaler. Double the resolution and proceed with the default settings. Kriya creates an extremely crisp image, sometimes maybe already a little bit too crisp. If you want to keep the details but remove some of the sharpness, quadruple the resolution and click the enhance button again. The result is a slightly more natural looking picture. For this demonstration, I proceed with the 2K version and download the image. Step seven. In Photoshop, I create a copy of the base layer, make the cap slightly smaller and remove some artifacts before I draw a rough mask and use generative fill and a simple prompt to delete the label. Photoshop does a pretty good job here. You can now replace it with a custom label or keep the previous one, delete some of the gibberish with the remove tool and replace it with custom text. That's it, we are done. Let me know in the comment section if you like these short tutorials and subscribe for more. Thank you very much for tuning in. See you in the next one.